Good morning and welcome to Photo Joseph's Photo Moment, the first live the rest weekly show here on YouTube at youtube.com slash Photo Joseph, 9.30 a.m. every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. That would be Pacific time. How y'all doing out there today? Hope you had a fabulous weekend. It is Monday. It is the Monday before Christmas. And hey, if you have a photographer in your life who you need to do some last minute big time shopping for, I got a good bag for you. That's what we're going to talk about today. Ba I love bags. I'm like bags are, I'm, yeah, I like bags. So here's the thing. Think Tank, y'all know them. Think Tank's awesome bag company. Love them. I've been using their stuff for years, over a decade. I've got stuff. I have Think Tank bags that are over a decade old. They're, they make really, really good gear. Um, good, solid, reliable, really well designed, really well thought out gear. I've met part of the crew before, stopped in their offices in Santa Rosa once. It was, it's good. Yeah, it's cool stuff, man. You know, a good bunch of people. Anyway, they got a brand new bag. They said, hey, Joseph, do you want to take a look at this bag? And I said, well, obviously. Come on. I'm a bag guy. Like, seriously, let's take a look at the bag. So the bag, let's start by just looking at it real quick on the um, on the store page. We're looking at B&H here. So you can see this is not a cheap bag. It's uh, at $290. This is a bigger one. But this is, a, this is a roller bag. So the whole idea here is you have a maximum size carry-on for pretty much all airplanes roller bag. Now, one of the really cool things about this bag is the interior. Let me go to a different picture here. Like you can do all camera gear like so in the interior, but what you can also do, it comes with this little pouchy thing so that you can fill part of it with clothes. I mean, you could pouch it or not pouch it, so you could just do it like that, or I think there's somewhere in here, there's another one with the net mesh thing. There we go, there's a mesh bag full of clothes. There's a lot of different options for the bag, which is great, right? Because if you're, if you're flying and you're trying to go carry-on only and you need more gear than you really want to throw in your backpack, but you don't want to carry a big camera bag and then have to check another bag for clothing. If basically you can fit everything you need into a bag this size, then awesome. And of course, if you just want to carry a ton of gear, then into the gear, uh, gear into the bag it goes. Now, um, one of the things I'll say about this type of bag, I have another bag from Think Tank that's probably eight or nine or maybe more years old that is basically the same size as this. It's not a roller, it's a backpack. And let me tell you, you don't want to put that much weight on your back for very long. <laughs> so having a roller bag this size is fantastic. So again, it is sized specifically so that it will go in the overhead bin. The um, front pouch, which we'll, we'll see, I'm going to pull it up here in a moment. The front pouch, which has a laptop slot and a laptop sleeve in it. If you put anything in there, they say that if you expand that pocket, you may go beyond the carry-on size, but you can obviously just take your laptop out. So that's that's an option as well. So let's uh, let's take a look at how I've configured the bag. This is not for any particular trip. Um, unfortunately, this bag did not arrive before my. Oh, I just realized Ryan, you're supposed to tell me these things that were not on the screen for the last half hour. I don't know where he's at today. Sorry about that. Yeah, uh -huh, excuses, excuses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I I might think it's that kind of a show, isn't it? It is just that kind of a show. Anyway, so um. Let's take a look at the bag, shall we? Let's uh, let's get this thing. So I have really filled this thing up. Oopa. I have filled this thing up. I have maximized what's in here. The, the, the I was talking about the laptop thing on the front. So, pardon the Velcro sound. Um, I actually didn't mean to have. Well, there's my little. I did a video on this thing last week. This is my super cool little uh, full of cables thing. That's kind of going in the front. It doesn't really fit inside anywhere really nicely. So that's going in the front for now. This is not meant to be in here. I forgot this was in there. We'll just get rid of that. Um, like this, this is now full-on legal carry-on overhead compartment size. Once you start filling this up, it may be a little bit beyond that. So whatever you put in here, it's a good idea to be able to take it out. I have a, I had a suggestion for Think Tank, which I passed along to them, that I think, I think is pretty cool. So let's say that you've got this and you're going to put your laptop on the front here. It has a, you can fit up to a 17-inch laptop. There's another little pocket in here for an iPad, whatever. Anyway, let's say you're about to board the plane and, you know, they do the gate check thing. I fly a lot of small planes because I live in a small airport, a near a small airport, so I don't live in the airport. It may seem that way sometimes, but no. Uh, my airport's quite small, so a lot of the planes that I fly out of here are the little puddle jumper size ones where even a bag this size has to be gate checked. So they stick it under the plane, but, you know, they take it from you at the gate and they give it back right back to you. That's fine. You know, this is, it's obviously fully robust and able to handle that, no problem. Um, but you probably want to take your laptop out. So this doesn't come with a separate laptop bag. I actually have another Think Tank bag that will fit in here perfectly, but um, but it doesn't come with that. But my suggestion to Think Tank, tell me what you guys think of this, is you have a, a bag in here that slides in that's for your laptop, right? And it's got a little bit of padding. It doesn't need to be crazy padding, just a little bit of padding. 
On the front of the bag is one of those super stretchy neoprene pockets. Idea being that I am about to board the plane and now I have to gate check this. So obviously I wanna take my laptop, but maybe I wanna grab my headphones and a charger or you know whatever out. And I just wanna be able to shove those into the front of my little now second carry on, you know, now just the laptop bag thing. And I don't need a organized pocket. I just need something that will stretch to accommodate whatever the heck I'm gonna shove in there. So that's, that's step one of this. Step two, you don't like this, is the back of this laptop bag should have Velcro strips, the sticky side, the loop side of the hook and loop things, right, the loop side, so that you can set it down on the floor in front of you on the airplane, right, set it down at your feet, and it's not gonna slide around. Because the airplanes are always carpeted, and that little Velcro there would stick to the carpet, so I don't have to worry about it sliding during takeoff and landing. Isn't that cool? Don't you like that? See? This is, this is why we do this. I think that would be brilliant. If one comes out, you know where the idea came from. Okay, let's take a look at how I've configured this thing because this is definitely um, a lot of gear packed into this. This, as I said, is not packed up for any particular trip. It unfortunately did not come before my last trip to New York. I was hoping it would, but it came while I was gone, so I didn't get to take this with me. Um, it would have been perfect for that. I have configured this as kind of a filmmaker kit, if you will, everything that I would want to do, everything I would, I would want to have to make a um, kind of a vloggy, but more than vlog, short filmish type thing. I don't know. I just basically shoved a bunch of crap in here because I could. Uh, let's take a look at what's in here. I'm going to turn this around. Oh, incidentally, rollers, you know, obviously rollers, obviously handle. That's part of the whole point here, right? There's a little handle, telescoping handle. Yay. Okay. So that's all there. Good. Oh, and since we're on the outside, let's do this real quick. This side has a stretchy pocket to put a tripod in. So you could put, you know, one leg of a tripod in there. It comes with straps that you would loop into here. So you see the little handle here. You loop the straps in there, strap that on. So you could have your tripod hanging on the outside of that. And the other side here has a handle, which obviously you're going to want to get this thing in and out of the overhead compartment. A little business card holder, which I haven't even put a card in yet. But a little business card holder thing on the top here, which is nice to help you identify, you know, your bag. Um, and the big pocket in the front. Okay, let's let's go inside of this thing. I'm gonna have to move some crap around here. And arr, we're gonna go this way, open this thing up, and get the iPad out of the way so I don't break anything. And we are going to switch to the top down. Let's get this thing nicely lined up. There we go. And boom. Here's how I've configured this thing. So all I've got in here right now is one camera, which which seems like, you know, how could you only have one camera in this much stuff? I wanted to put my little tripod in here, not hanging on the outside. So my little tripod's here. Clearly, I could easily take this thing out. Got a bag full of cables here. And now I've got room for another camera. This is deep enough, by the way. This is designed really for full-size DSLR gear. I obviously am putting my mirrorless gear in here which means sometimes you end up stacking lenses because they're so short or kind of finding funky ways to put the pads. Maybe you kind of put them in a triangle pattern instead of in a square pattern because they fit better that way. Uh, so you, that's really, those are kind of your options, right? In any given shape, let's say your shape's this big. If I rectangle cut it just straight down the middle, there's two full-size lenses. But if I kind of do triangles with the little pads, little inserts, then I can get three lenses in there. If they're short, stubby lenses, then you can stack them. And you can put one of the little pads in there in between them if you need to, or just let them sit on top of each other. You know, as long as the lens caps are on, they're not gonna get hurt. So, so there's that. So, oop, wrong. let's go back to the overhead. Okay, so I had tripod in there because I kind of like having a little tripod with me and this is just oh, what's I think this is chargers um yeah or this is a bunch of charge camera battery chargers and so on so I've shoved that into here which is small enough that I can kind of jam into there super I've got my slider in here oh wait actually take this out here there is my Mevo so I got a little Mevo in there because you know you never know when you want to go live um which you can see it's kind of tucked in among here if I pull this up now I've got my Edelcone slider. I love having this thing with me. It's one of those things where I honestly, I don't use this thing enough. I love it. And if I don't have it with me, I'm really as disappointed because whenever I don't have it, I want it. Um, I don't use it as much as I should though. It's really cool. I really should get more use out of that. Um, but you'll see in here, let's go back to the top down. You see in here, there's, um, you kind of see, I just realized it's quite dark in here. But anyway, um, here, you know what? This is what I'm gonna do. Let me grab my phone and Flash like that. Is that helpful? There you go. That's a little bit helpful. So there's kind of like a little L-shaped thing in here. This ledge, I know you totally can't see. You can, I'm pointing to it there. That's part of the ledge from the handles. So there's like an L shape in here, which just ever so coincidentally happens to perfectly accommodate this thing. So 
kind of digging on that. And then I just have that on there just to hold that down so it can't fall out. Pretty cool, right? Okay. Um, let's see here. Let's, before we move on, let's switch over to the comments real quick because a few people are asking questions about this show. And incidentally, if you're watching live and you have questions, comments, whatever, stick them up here. Make sure you type at photo Joseph in front of it as these good people have, and that way I will see it and know to address it. Um, skate tubes is when a video about dates, calendars, etc. I'm not sure what you mean. You want me to do a, video, date, a video about the calendar software that I use? No, it can't be right. Please clarify what you mean. I'm sorry. I do not know. Uh, Brett says, wanted to thank you for the calendar idea last show. Okay, and we're talking about calendars again. What did I do with the last show about a calendar? I ordered two of them for family members. Oh, the, okay, you guys are talking about the, not the photo moment show. You guys are talking about photos, the Apple photos show. Right? I'm assuming. Um, I'm glad that was a good idea that you liked the idea for doing the calendar. You did two of them for family members and they'll, uh, they'll arrive well before Christmas. That's perfect. Good. Very nice. Yeah, so for those of you using Apple photos or any service, whatever, last minute Christmas gifts, holiday gifts, whatever you want to do. Uh, calendars, personalized calendars. Awesome. Okay, moving on. Let's see here. And uh, Jim says, Jim Williams says, yet to convince the wife that she needs this roller bag that I like. <laughs> That's a good plan, right? You get your spouse convinced that they need it. Yeah, that's how you do it. Uh, R. John Creation says, I like the Low Pro Roller 200 because then you can take the chassis out and wear it as a backpack in case the wheeled carry on has to be checked. Cool. Anytime I can avoid my camera get checked. Yeah, totally, totally get it. Um, that's, I think, I've never had an issue checking hand, what do you call it, uh, gate checking. Uh, I mean, I've checked you know, full on checked bags before too, especially if it's in a Pelican, the big Pelican, you know, sometimes it's just, it is what it is. You do what you got to do, but clearly it's preferable not to have to. Um, Axel says, what slider is that? This is the Edelkrone slider one with the motorized attachment. So I'd have to connect it to the phone, but it, it motor, it's got a motor and, and it can automatically go. It's pretty awesome. Um, or this base, this is a motorized base. I can take this off so it's just the slider and then it works as a hand slider as well. Uh, but it's uh, it's a little kind of mini motorized slider packet. We'll stick a link to the whole thing down below. And also I've done videos on it. We'll link to those up there. All right, let's get that back in there. And Daddy MCC says, good morning. Another late shoot, almost missed watching. Well, I'm glad that you're here. Okay, let's go back to digging through the gear. So a couple of lenses. This is a bigger lens, so that one I think goes all the way to the bottom, almost all the way to bottom, because there is a there is the thing for the handle in there sticking up, taking a little bit of space. So that's there. And then here, yep, same thing. Just this is a slightly longer lens, not really big, but it's small enough. I got a little pad, uh, what do you call it, um, lens wipe shoved into the bottom there, and then that on top. There's, there's definitely room in here. I could pad this off better. I could probably squeeze another small lens in there, but that's what's in there for now. Uh, here we got the GH5, so there's a GH5, and if I put on my little mini tripod or whatever, that would fit in there just fine as well. Over here I've got the microphone. I really can't find a way to have the mic on here and position this. No matter what, this is just a bad idea. So that comes off, this goes into here. And again, it's got a little bit of a deeper slot there because of the, the lift from the handle being down the middle. It goes into there, and there we go. Over here we've got more lenses. Let's see here, there's, so this is a slightly shorter pocket here, so there's a lens, there's a lens, and this could easily be, I could, you know, th there's, there's like this much extra depth, so I could put another small lens on top of that, and then another lens. So this is three lenses across here. So one, two, three, four, five lenses, plus what's on here. And again, if I took this thing out, the tripod out, I could easily put another body, and I could put even more lenses in here. It comes with plenty, plenty of these little divider guys. My spark, can't go anywhere without the spark. So the spark is in here without a case, I really should find something to kind of snap on to protect the lens because that does make me a little bit nervous. But if I take off the propellers, then it's much safer, much easier to just kind of get in there and it nestles in there nicely and that's held in nice and snug and tight. Got the Spark remote controller over here. Here's the propellers. Uh, the propellers I have found fit very, very nicely inside of a little battery holder. It's just a little AA battery holder. So all four of them are in there all nicely, all nice, get it back in there you little, um, all nicely snapped in, perfect, looks good. And then I've got the controller with this nice little protector that, uh, that Mr. Sean Mark Nipper dropped by for me. He didn't need any more, thank you very much, buddy. So that's on there to protect that. So these kind of go in here and jam into there and away we go. I've got my video because I do like to carry this thing around in case I wanna do a big live stream from, uh, from the big boy camera. So we got that in there. And then my little mic pack. This is my little travel mic pack that's got my 
couple of wired labs from Rode. So I've done shows on these before. We'll link to these either up here or down below or somewhere um, if you're looking for info on all the mics. But there's the full mic kit that I just shoved into this nice little packet and away we go. And that slides nicely into there. And that's that, essentially. Uh, if we go over to the big pockets, there's two big mesh pockets here. Uh, one of these is full of cables and memory cards and then batteries and filters and stuff like that. This, by the way, if you don't have these things, uh, little uh, uh, step rings, it's fantastic. I've, I can take, with this combination of step rings, these are from K and F Concept. I'll, I will link to this down below as well. I can take this whole combination of stuff here. Look at this, this is kind of ridiculous almost. Here, let me switch over to the view here. I can take this, <laughs> look at this thing. Let's go for this close up view. There we go. Uh, is it gonna focus? Probably not. Uh, of course not, why would it focus? Let's go right in the center. Come on you, come on, you can do it. Uh, or not, yeah, <laughs> figures. Anyway, big old stack of focus rings. This is one, two, three, four, whatever. And this goes from 72, no, 77 millimeter all the way down to 43, which means I can take my Xiongyi F.95 <laughs> and, and my big 77 millimeter, is this the right one? Uh, yeah, my big 77 millimeter variable ND filter, pop this onto here, and now I've got a variable ND. I mean, it's ridiculous, right? Like, look at that. But hey, it works. Why not, man? You know? If you want to be able to shoot F.95 in full sun, you're going to need that. See, you don't have to buy a whole bunch of filters. Just buy one big filter and then a set of these. 10 bucks or something really too. We'll link to this down below as well. Okay, so that's what's in there. Batteries are in there and so on. That's basically it. It's, it, the bag doesn't have a thousand little pockets, which some bags obviously do. Some of the think tank, think tank bags have tons of little pockets. This one doesn't. It's basically got a couple of big mesh pockets, a big old pocket in the front. On one hand, it's a bit more versatile. On the other hand, it's a little bit harder to keep organized. I think I would appreciate if, let's say, the top half of this was a totally organized bunch of little pockets and the bottom one was just a big mesh. I think that would be a nice compromise because I do like having that little capability to organize stuff. But let's face it, if I'm traveling with this, this is not going to be the only bag. Right, this is gonna be a second bag. There's no way this is the only bag that I'm taking. So I could have a second bag a backpack, shoulder bag, whatever it might be, that would have all my little bits and pieces and pens and headphones, all the little things that, uh, that I would want those little pockets for. So with that in mind, maybe it's okay that it's two big mesh bags, but we'll see. These wheels are nice. They, they always do really nice wheels on the Think Tank rollers. This is those um, roller blade style, whatever those things are called. And it's heavy because I've really filled it full of stuff. Oh, I have all this space now. Okay, uh, let's see what's going on back in the comments in here. Um, bum, 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 where were we? Uh, Yuri, hey Yuri, <laughs> that's my kid's name. Uh, how do Think Tank backpacks compare to Peak Design? Uh, okay, so the only Peak Design bag that I have is the Everyday Messenger. I think that's what it's called. Yeah, the Everyday Messenger. I love that bag. I think it's fantastic. Um, for, you know, if you're just going to carry your laptop and a camera and a couple lenses or just a relatively small amount of gear, I think the Think Tank Messenger is great. It is, of course, the messenger style bag. So if you prefer a backpack backpack, then well, you prefer a backpack backpack. Um, I don't have any peak design backpacks. I don't know if they even make any. They're very different styles of bags. They're all great. I mean, let's be honest. It's, it's hard to find a bad bag these days. I have several Think Tank products. One of my favorite bags is this, I've done a show on it, I think. It's this weird bag that kind of expands and compresses and it's like super, super flexible. Um, I have a lot of Think Tank bags that I really, really like. I think pretty much every bag that I have from Think Tank does get used on a fairly regular basis. I'm the kind of person that I don't, because when I go on a shoot, I never take the same things twice. So I don't have a bag, right? I know a lot of photographers have a bag and everything's in there. And you know what? I'm kind of envious of that because there's this, this confidence that everything is in the bag. You know exactly where everything is. You could get it into it blindfolded because you just know it's always in the same place. I change bags pretty much every trip just because I will figure out what I need to bring and then figure out the smallest bag I can possibly take to accommodate that. So things change a lot. So, so I love all my thing tape bags and they all get used. I'm just gonna leave it at that. Um, Jim Williams says small rig cage on or off. The cage is not on there. The cage is on the other GH5, which is in the studio mounted up with other stuff, but it would absolutely fit in there. You'd have to take off the, um, 
the display, the, what do you call it? The, um, the, the, the ninja, if you were doing that. So, right. I mean, that's, if I was going to do like full on film shoot thing, then I would probably take out that tripod, drop the ninja in there. This is more like the grab and go bag. Uh, but the cage could absolutely stay on and fit in there. No problem whatsoever. That cage is really sleek and, and wraps around. If you guys don't know what cage I'm talking about, we'll link to that up here. Cause I already did a video on that. A couple of them actually. Uh, let's see here. Dad MCC, try carrying that much in one bag with full frame lens. Yeah. Ain't gonna happen. Uh, ben 5 Shuttle, what does it say on your white labels on the lenses? Oh, that is, I put the lens, what the lens is, the focal length and aperture, mm -hmm. um, and the 35 millimeter equivalent, which is an interesting thing. So here, let me pull these out and show you. Get that up close here. When I, sorry, the zippers, very loud, I know. When I first started using Micro Four Thirds several years ago, you know, for me, in my head, it was all about, let's see if we can get it to focus today. It was all about full frame. That's what I was used to. And so I needed to think in full frame. So I labeled all my lenses. This is the 12 to 35 F2.8, equivalent of a 24 to 70. Because I would, th my, in my head, I'd go, I want the 24 70. So this is the lens that I would grab. All of my lenses have these because they will either sit in, I have a, a, a drawer full of gear that these sit in. Or of course, if they're in the bag, I just want to be able to tell at a glance what it is. I no longer think 2470. Now when I go to grab this lens, I grab the 12 to 35. I just I know in my head what that is now. Um, it took a little while to kind of transition my brain to that, but now I think that way. I still label my lenses that way. Um, I think just out of habit. Yeah, I think it's just out of habit, but that's what those are. Anyway, so I have a little, you know, little label maker and I put the lens, what lens it is on there. The only time this is a problem is when you're quickly moving around swapping lenses and these end up getting on the wrong lens or you can't find the right one for the lens, that can be a little bit annoying. But I like having the lens thing on there so when I'm looking down at my bag, I can see exactly what is what um, or in the drawer in the studio, you know, whatever. But that's that's what that is. But good question. Thanks for asking that. Uh, let's see here. Joey Levin says, there are gimbal locks slash clamp for the Spark and Amazon for like $8. Oh, good. Oh, thank you, Joey. Okay, cool. I will look for that. That's a that's great. I do definitely need that. Um, APN TV says I like that. Build your own matte box from filter rings. <laughs> it is a matte box, isn't it? It's like it's a huge thing. Hey, why not? It's uh, you know it keeps the sun out. Um, yes, that's pretty cool. Okay, that's that. That's basically that. If you like the bag, if you decide to buy one, we've put links down below to uh, Amazon and to B and H uh, and Adorama. I think if it's uh, if it's available there, it probably is. And uh, yeah, that's about that. Uh, Marvin's got a question about the GH5. I assume says, can you assign the function button to display on off? No, no. The display on off button is the display button. Yeah, sorry. I think that's already just it's got its own dedicated button. Okay, I think that's it. Hey, we're gonna do uh, we're gonna do a show on Wednesday. I don't know if I'm gonna do a show Friday or not. We'll see. I might not because it's you know almost Christmas. And then the week after, the week between Christmas and New Year, we're definitely not doing any shows. So we'll be back in the New Year's. That is the plan. Axel says, "Good budget telephoto." Uh, I don't know. How long of a telephoto? What camera format? Uh, are you talking Micro Four Thirds? You talking Lumix? For the GH Five? Um, I don't know. Um, how long do you want to go? I mean, there's, I don't have, let me think about this. Are there any, I don't know if Sigma is making a long lens for it. So you might just be looking at the, um, at the Lumix lenses. The 100 to 300 is definitely a cheaper lens than the 100 to 400 Leica. So that's worth looking at if you want that really long reach. It's um, you know not as good of a lens because it's not the Leica lens, but it's a, it's a pretty good lens. And if you get an older one, because there's now a Mark II of that, you could probably get a used one um, of, of the Mark Ones, which is you know it's an okay lens. It's it's not a great lens. I've used it. Actually, I think I have a copy still. It's not a great lens, but it's a long lens. It'll get the job done. When it comes to shopping lenses, remember that if you if you're looking at the latest and greatest, you're like, oh man, I really want that lens, but you can't afford it. Don't forget about the used market. There's as long as it's a good quality. A uh, piece of gear, you know, the used market's great for buying stuff like this. There's a, great, now I've forgotten the name of it. Um, when I was at Robert's Camera, they have a used camera department that is its whole big, huge, it's the second largest used camera store in the country. And let me, here we go, um, usedphotopro.com. Here, I'm going to pull this up here. Used Photo Pro, this is Robert's Camera in Indianapolis. They have the second largest collection of used camera gear. 
And you can, you know, go through the website and find all kinds of good stuff there. But I will, if I ever get the vlog out, um, I did some shooting in their back room. It's incredible how much used gear they have on there. And then they took me into the back back room where they had a warehouse full of boxes of used gear they haven't even opened and cataloged yet. It's insane. So don't forget about used. Used is a great, great way to save some money. And if you're buying from someone like Used Photo Pro, every piece of gear that you look at will have a rating on it. And then you know, and there's a scale thing that says obviously what the rating means. And so you know if it's from flawless down to, it's actually got mold growing on the inside of the lens. But you know, hey, just as long as you know what you're getting, you know what you're getting. Uh, obviously those are a little bit cheaper. So yeah, check those guys out. Used Photo Pro, it is, again, it is Robert's camera in Indianapolis, but they ship all over the world. They will ship worldwide for their used gear. So super important to know. Um, all right, let's see here. Uh, Yuri is asking uh, G9 review timing. I'm not going to do a an actual kind of review until the final shipping product. I, I because that's a bad idea. Um, and remember, I'm sponsored by Panasonic, so I it's not a review in the traditional sense. I'll I've already done a whole thing telling you about the camera. Uh, we'll link to that up here. I did a big video about the G9. It's, it's a great camera, obviously. It's fantastic, but. Uh, don't expect a traditional review from me because that's just not what I do here. Excellent. Yuri says 45 to 202, 45 to 200. That's a pretty slow lens versus the 100 to 300. I don't have the 45 to 200. I've never played with that one, so sorry, I can't. I can't. This turned into a Q&A show, which is fine. We haven't done this in a while. Um, and rentals is an always option too. Uh, is always an option too. Scott is pointing out. Yeah, absolutely. That's a great way to try a lens. If you think you want a lens, but you don't know if you really want to spend the thousand or two thousand or three thousand dollars or whatever it might be, rent it. Rent it and give it a try. And sometimes a lens that expensive, you don't need to own. You only need to use it a couple times a year. So rent it. And that way you can always have the latest and greatest, which is great. Rental is just love, love it, love it. Uh, Spark the producer. Interesting. Says, um, how is the Lumix G Vario 12 to 60 F3556 aspherical? Are you talking about the non Leica? I think that's the non Leica. If that's the non Leica, never used it. If that's the Leica, because I always forget the apertures on these things. If that's the Leica, the Leica one's amazing. I did not expect to like it because it's an, a variable aperture lens, but I love it. It's a great, great lens. Okay. Let's wrap this thing up. Let's get out of here. Hey, everybody. Thank you very much for tuning in today. You know what to do. If you like the video, hit that thumbs up. Do the subscribe thing. Yeah, know the routine. We all like that. If you have something sad to say, then put it in the comments and I will address it. Uh, be nice. We like it when people are nice. Every once in a while, people get a little randy in the comments. But for the most part, people are pretty nice. We like that. All right, guys. Take care of yourselves. Have a lovely week. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.